A hundred years before Einstein's birth, King Louis XV was on the throne of France. But the ancient, absolute power of the monarchy over the people was starting to be challenged. Shark, leave the windows, forget the rain. We need air. The French Revolution was just around the corner. <laughs> this was the era of enlightenment, when intellectuals believed very firmly that the way forward lay in science. And they felt that one of the first tasks that lay ahead of them was to rationalize and to classify every single kind of matter so they could see how it all interacted together. Antoine Lavoisier, a wealthy aristocratic young man, decided to take up this task, to see if there was some basic connection between all the stuff of everyday life, all the different substances in the world. But what worked for Lavoisier as a scientist, his meticulous, even obsessive attention to detail, was also to be his downfall. Monsieur Lavoisier, you are, if my eyes do not deceive me, consuming only milk this evening. First you had a glass of milk, now you are eating a bowl of milk. Will you next move on to a plate of milk? <laughs> Your precise observations commend you as a lady of scientific curiosity, mademoiselle. Most unusual. As you seek knowledge, so I shall dispense it. For the last five weeks, I have taken nothing but milk. <laughs> Good God, man. I would rather die than fast on milk for five weeks. Are you in the grip of some horrendous ailment? On the contrary. I am investigating the effects of diet on health. And monsieur, with the greatest of respect to a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences, your gut must think your throat has been slit. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas your gut count is no doubt petitioning the Academy for a widening of your throat. Marianne, how dare you insult the Count? <laughs> Don't forget what the Count offers. Not just marriage, but think of how you will be introduced to all the salon. You will be the toast of Paris. Would it not be a shame, madame, to burden you with the duties of matrimony before you have had a chance to experience your curiosity for nature. Shall we all go through? It's getting rather hot in here. Do you really plan to marry the Amara? There is a plan, but it is not mine. Then I must contrive to save you. Lavoisier wasn't a chemist by profession. He was the head of tax enforcement in Paris. His great idea was to build a huge wall round the city and to tax everything that came and went. But his taxes on the simple things in life, bread, wine and cheese, did not endear him to the average Parisian. However, this scrupulous, fastidious young man did allow himself the occasional act of passion. In 1771, Lavoisier married Marie Anne Pauls, the daughter of his colleague in the tax office. Thus he saved her, as he had promised, from an arranged marriage to a count 40 years or elder. Allow me to show you something. Lavoisier, I think, found his job as a tax collector really rather tedious, and the times he looked forward to were the evenings and the weekends when he could indulge his passion for chemical experimentation. And he called those times his jour de bonheur, his days of happiness. Madame. What will happen if I take a bar of copper or iron and leave it outside in the rain for months on end. Madame Lavoisier. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Lavoisier. The metals. <laughs> what will become of them? Is this a verbal examination? 
prior to an examination proper, mm. sir? I merely <laughs> seek the truth. Then you join with me, monsieur, for you know the truth. The copper will become covered in a green verdigris, and the iron will rust. I believe the term is uh, calcined. Most impressive, my charming wife. <laughs> but let me press you further. Mm -hmm. When the metal rusts, does it get heavier or lighter? Why, sir, I think you mean to trap me. Oh. And perhaps this little butterfly should land and allow me to take a closer look. Every last citizen in France of sensible age knows that when a metal rusts, it wastes away, it gets lighter and eventually disappears. Ah, but... Ah, stop. I have not finished. Contain yourself, sir. There is more. In a recently published pamphlet by a brilliant young chemist, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrates that the iron combines with the air. It, in fact, becomes heavier. Most impressive. I intend... Now, whatever you intend, monsieur, I intend to be by your side. I will learn all I can about your science and become your worthy colleague. Then let me show you how the iron combines with the air to form such a delicate union. Tomorrow, monsieur. Tomorrow. Marianne learned chemistry at her husband's side, but soon sought other ways to contribute to his work. She learned English so that she could translate contemporary scientific works. She took drawing lessons so that she could record in forensic detail the minutiae of their work together. She ran their laboratory and was the public face of the Lavoisier enterprise. She was central to the whole research effort. Thing to say. <laughs> you are a cheeky man. <laughs> this way, please, gentlemen. <clears throat> Monsieur, it is my great ambition to demonstrate that nature is a closed system, that in any transformation, no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost, and none is gained. Over here, please. This precise amount of water is heated to steam. This steam is brought into contact with a red-hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool this steam. But interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So clearly, we lose a certain amount of water. However, we also collect a gas. And the weight of the iron barrel increases. Now, when we combine these two increases, the new weight of the iron barrel and the gas we have collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Lavoisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain. I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila. <laughs> 